Before getting on to using the module system, I think it's very helpful if you have a decent understanding of how the module system works. So I'm going to dedicate this video to just going through and explaining what everything in the module system does. So we'll open this up. We'll start off with the build module file. If we open this up in a text editor, we can see that all this actually does is run these process files in the module system. If you look at the files other than the build module file, you've got four main types of Python file. You've got the header files, then you've got the ID files, the module files, and the process files. And these last ones are what get run when you double click on buildmodule.bat. Now what these process files actually do is they generate the text files that you see in here. So let's open one of these up. We'll take party templates. If you wanted to make changes to the party templates in the game, you could do so by directly editing this text file. But this would be almost impossible to do because it's really difficult to understand what any of this is. We've got here the Step Bandits party template has the name Step Bandits, and then we've got a bunch of numbers which are just about impossible to understand. Even if you do know what each number represents, it's a real pain in the ass to try to find out what values you're supposed to change them to to make the changes that you want. So instead, the module system gives us a way to easily understand and make changes and generate these text files. So let's have a look at the process party templates file. This process file is where all of the code is contained that actually generates the text file. Now you don't have to understand everything that's going on in here. You're never going to make changes to this process file. The process files you should not ever touch. Just be aware that these are the files that actually have the code to generate what we see in here. So for example, here it says open up the file party templates.txt, which is stored in the export directory. The export directory was defined in module info, and so we import that from that file. The first line it writes is party templates file version one. So that's what you see at the top. Then it writes out the number of party templates, which is 63. And then it iterates through every party template that there is and writes out pt underscore some string and then another string and then a bunch of numbers. So that's what we see there. But where do these party templates come from? Here we've got essentially a variable in the form of a list but we have not declared this variable within this file. Instead, it is declared in module party templates, which is then imported. So to see where we get all of the values that are actually put into these text files, we need to look at the module file, module party templates. This is the file where you're going to make all of your changes. If you have a look down here, if we look at step bandits in the module file as opposed to the text file, we can actually understand what these fields represent. We've got the name and then we've got, you know, this party template will be represented on the map with a Kerjit icon. Parties of this template will carry a certain amount of goods. They belong to the outlaws faction. Their AI exhibits a bandit personality. And the troops in this template consist of between 4 and 58 step bandits. This is all stuff that you can rather easily understand and make changes to. And once we have made changes, when process party templates gets run, it will import all of these values from here, and then it will insert the necessary numbers into the text file. The numbers that we see are stored as the values of these variables. So variables like icon underscore curget, you know, fac underscore outlaws, 
bandit underscore personality, etc. These variables have names that we can very easily interpret when we're reading it here, and they have the numbers needed to be put into the text files the game can read. So where do these variables come from? Because they're not declared in this file. This file declares one variable, which is PMF is prisoner, and then it just declares this party templates list. The variables that we use in the module files are declared in the header files and the ID files, which we then import. So icon gray knight would be defined in ID map icons. Faction commoners would be defined in ID factions. We'll have a look first at the ID files. These are used to define objects in the game that are stored within their own text files. So when we look at the fifth field in a party template, which is the faction, factions are stored in factions.txt. And when the game reads in a number, which it expects to represent a faction, it uses that to determine which faction from factions.txt to take. So if we have a look at ID factions, the way it works is that if it gets a number of zero for the party templates faction, it says, okay, zero, I'm gonna take the first faction defined in factions.txt, which is no faction. If it gets the number one, then it looks for the second faction defined in factions.txt, which is commoners. If it gets two, then it's outlaws and so on. Now, if you were to add a new faction, then you might think, well, I'm going to have to update these ID files because if I were to put a new faction in here, for example, then this faction would become faction number seven and so this would be shifted to faction number eight and so on. But you do not have to make these changes yourself because these are done automatically by the process files. If we open up process factions, for example, not only does process factions write to the factions.txt file, it actually writes to the ID factions file and automatically fills in these variables with the appropriate numbers. So if I create a new faction in module factions, let's say I want to put a new faction after the Dark Knights. I'll just put in something stupid. So we've got the White Knights who, unlike the Dark Knights, get along really well with Innocence and the player faction. Now if I run build module, changes have been made to this ID factions file. So we'll check what those changes are. We now have our new faction put into here and all of these other factions are given their updated values. So if you were to create a new faction and put it in the middle here like this, if you were just making changes directly to the text files, then the numbers used in here would no longer be appropriate. For example, if we look at forest bandits, they have the faction with index 29. You can see here, forest bandits equals 29. Before we inserted our new faction, this was 28. So if we just inserted a new faction directly into factions.txt, but did not update party templates, then the forest bandit party templates would now actually have the faction mountain bandits. So lots of things would get messed up if we were just trying to make changes directly to the text files. But using the module system, it's all good. So the ID files are used to define these variables that specifically represent objects that are defined in their own text files in the game. We've then also got the header files. So if we look at header factions, for example, 
This defines the value for the always hide label flag. And the value here is just equal to one. So when we see this, innocents and merchants have their label always hidden, which is something you can understand. Whereas if we just saw the number one, we would have no idea what that is. So we've got the header files for just certain things like this that are specific to these module files. Then we've got the ID files to reference other objects that are contained in their own text files and module files. The module files hold all of the data that gets put into the text files and the process files contain the code to actually do the text file generating. So those are all of the components of the module system.